are joined by Aerial Investments Chairman and Co-CEO John Rogers, who oversees more than $13 billion in assets under management. Our uh, guest host all morning has been Joe Ternova. He's also hanging out with us. Um, you just heard what Mike had to say. Do you think a bottom is in place? Well, you never know. This is unprecedented, crazy, crazy times. But it does feel like there's been some type of capitulation. You know, so much volatility, so much fear. It makes you feel like you're getting toward a bottom. And what have you been doing about it over these past couple of days? And what do you plan to do about it today? Well, we've been talking to all of our management teams on the phones, the CEOs, trying to get as many uh, company visits as possible. And we want to take advantage of the volatility. So have you been buying? Have you been legging in the entire past week and a half? We weeks? have been. I you wish we could say we just started yesterday, but we've been doing it for several weeks now as the market gets cheaper and cheaper. We're finding more and more unprecedented bargains. And what do you think? I mean, we've been talking about it all, all morning. What do you think is baked into the market in terms of where we are right now, in terms of what may or may not happen going forward with the virus, that is? I think as this weekend unfolded and we got into this week, I think people really are seeing uh, all the bad news, I think, is pretty well incorporated. People are all extrapolating this and seeing it getting to be like Italy. People are talking about cutting, you know, all the things that could go wrong here. Talking and you about think that's all, in, that's all in? I think it's all in. I really, really do. And there's some great, you know, great opportunities out there. John. It's interesting because you disagree with Andrew. That's, uh, no, no, anyway. yeah. can I, can I, you say that you see bargains. Amazing. Now, where are the areas that you think, uh, sectors or individual stocks that you think are really oversold at this level? We have two sectors that we've been sort of focused in on these days. One is the financial services. Mm -hmm. Our largest position is KKR. We think that private equity is an extraordinary place to be. More and more people, uh, you know, more and more investment committees are allocating money to private equity. They have lots of pools of cash, and they're in a position to take advantage of these bargains because there's so much cash in the private oh, equity world. That's been kind of waiting because prices have been so high. So this right. is the time to deploy. Exactly. I think this is kind of something that's be very helpful for them. Uh, I also strongly, strongly believe that Northern Trust, you know, this, the old gray lady of Chicago, it's a real anchor institution. It's selling at 10 times earnings kind of unprecedented cheatiness for the kind of brand and strength that Northern Trust represents. Yeah, where we yeah, pri that? Well, private equity has almost become like hedge funds of, of 10 to 15 years ago. And I think there's, there's some excitement if you're going to reprice them at a lower uh, level. But, but, John, let me ask you about the strategy of passive investing and the environment we're in now. Do you, do you think that passive investing strategy is kind of contributing to an acceleration in the volatility and the leverage liquidation that we're seeing? And do you see a return to more active management strategies? Well, I, I do believe that the passive management uh, phenomenon is exacerbating what's happened in the markets. And the active e the ETF markets have become so prominent. And the volatility just increases with the kind of uh, regular trading that happens within the, act within the passive area. We do believe strongly that active management will be making a comeback. There's us old dinosaurs will have our day in the sun. <laughs> and uh, there's real opportunities when the markets are trading for reasons that are not fundamental. Their stocks are trading because they're part of an index. If they're getting thrown away at bargain prices, it gives you an opportunity to be selective and find some great businesses that the indexes are getting rid of. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, now I'm going to go back. I'm going I'm to argue your side for a second because we're going to have Alarian on later yep. today. And he said 20 to 30 percent was definitely possible. There are other people that given the move that we've seen in recent years from 17, 16, 17, 18,000, all the way up to 30,000, some of them for a while have been saying this thing needs a 40% correction to get back to where long term you get down to a single digit multiple on some of these stocks. That's what we've seen in 74 and some of these bear markets. I just wonder if, if with professionals like you, John, whether there is a complacency that we assume 20 percent is going to be it, and it could be 30 or 35 percent, given that this is so different than anything we've, we've faced before. How was that, Andrew? Now you're, now you're, now you're I, I'm really, just I'm saying. To my side. <laughs> I've only ra the issue I've been raising all, all day and for the past couple of weeks is this idea that you could have a 10 percent correction on where the market was before, so here's what I think. and then you add in Corona. No, but I think the reason you get a 20 percent sharp self is right. because the worst case scenario, in, in people's traders' minds, they've already got that. But then again, technically, but I, I think that we haven't had a true washout. I don't wash think the worst like case, that. look, I don't think, I don't think, you tell me, I don't think a lockdown of London, New York, L.A., and Chicago, and Atlanta, and I don't think that's baked into the cards. That is not. No. But I think there's so many cheap sectors and cheap 
stock. See, now he look, sounds again like a complacent uh, but if you professional look, money look manager. Your that industry, scares the media me. industry right now, yeah. uh, CBS Viacom, selling at four times, three times earnings. They're going to sell $3 billion worth of assets. They've got such extraordinary content. It doesn't make sense at three to four times earnings. Meredith, you know, local television broadcaster and owner of People magazine, it's not only three and four times earnings, but it's got a 10% yield in an environment where we have less than 1% on our treasury bills. <laughs> so I just think this is a, these stocks are really treat and already baked in a lot, a lot of bad news. So, uh, John, let me ask it this way. December of 18, six months basically to recover. Uh, 87, two years to recover, 08, five years to recover. What type of recovery time period do you think we're challenged by? I, I think it's more of a six-month period. As you know, Ariel is 37 years old. We've been to this movie before. <laughs> we were there in 87 buying bargains during that crisis. We were there in 2008, early 2009, buying bargains. That's why we've been actually number one in our category since the March of 2009. So we think this is the opportunity to buy, and we think that, you know, it can last six months. You never know exactly how long. But as we always remember, you know, last century started at 66, ended at over 11,000. Warren Buffett always talks about that. And remember, last century, we had the Spanish flu. Uh, we had pandemics. We had two world wars, Great Depression, and the markets bounced John, back. John, did, did you have a lot of cash you'd kind of been hoarding up to this point? Where, what money are you putting to work? Well, we've done both. Some of our products have more cash than others. Our small cap product, we had a significant amount of cash, and so we've been able to put that right to work. What is that, 10% or something? What's the More than 6 to 7% okay. roughly. But then also we've been fortunate. There's been some takeovers here. Um, we own a lot of Tegna. So now we've been able to scale out of that a little bit as the uh, stock's risen recently because of the takeover. We think there will be more media uh, consolidation happening, and that helps you generate cash for new bargains. And then, of course, you sell your most expensive stocks to buy these really, really cheap ones. What else are you selling? Oh, well, we're not going to talk about specific, <laughs> trying, specific trying. sales. <laughs> Let me push you on a different issue, which is uh, last time you were here, you were a Bloomberg man. Uh, there was a report out yesterday that you have swung behind Biden, which maybe is not unexpected, but is that right? Well, yes. As you know, I was a true believer in what President Obama believed in and, and thought that he put together an extraordinary team. So uh, Vice President Biden was a part of that team, and so I'm supportive. And I uh, feel bad that, you know, Mike Bloomberg couldn't make it to the finish line. But we really think it's time for change. John, you had that wacky prediction that Pence was going to be president. I know you remember that. You said that, the, that Trump's hiding so much that there's got to be something there. So by 2020, Pence will be uh, president. But that made you worry that he'd be a much more viable candidate than if the president were trying to get reelected. So now you must be happy since it looks like it's going to be Trump. So he'll be easier. You said he'd be much easier to beat than Pence. I still believe that's the okay. case. Okay. But Pen what was the whole Pence thing? That, that you just took a shot that something mi that might be right? Well, well, we were saying we have to prepare for all eventual. No, no, you said that's going to happen, and we got ideas. We, we Let me ask you a different question. Yeah. How much do you think that this whole episode, both between the markets and what's happening with coronavirus yeah. more broadly, is going to have a, a demonstrable impact on come November? I think G given, I said, given that you think a bottom is in, right. it sounds like, right. and that this may or may not be behind us, but is looking more rearview mirror-ish than a forward mirror, does it actually impact the election? Well, as I said, six months is kind of my time frame. So as we get toward November, I think this will be kind of ancient history. We'll be on to some other issues in our country at that point. So you don't think that Biden will be able to take advantage of this to the extent that he's going to be able to argue that somehow this was mismanaged one way or the other? Well, it'd be a part of a mosaic of, you know, many things that have been mismanaged and so many things that have, so many people that have come and gone in so many different leadership roles. He'll be able to create a narrative there. But I think this virus challenge I mean, will be John, done by November. John, the president had a story to tell about the stock market and about, I mean, even on Friday, we got the latest example of, of the economy with that great jobs number and unemployment at 3.5% and wage gain. Until this came along, it knocked the stock market down, you know, almost 20%. Uh, we'll see what happens with the job numbers, but the mosaic you're talking about got a lot better for, for your side in the last month. There's no denying that, right? Uh, we're That's why you made, maybe you should. Polling numbers are I, very I, good. Hearing you say a bottoms and made me rethink everything uh, with Andrew. That's that scares me when I think too many people think think a bottom is in. A anytime I, I I'm supposedly consensus, so you got to go to the opposite. Well, yes, yeah. uh, yes. Like Seinfeld, the opposite day. He did. Um, thank you for being here.